So we're going to start our smoked salmon recipe by creating a brine for the smoked salmon. Brine just has four ingredients in it. This is about one gallon of water. To that I'm going to add one cup of dark brown sugar, one third of a cup of salt, and one teaspoon of Instacure number one. This is a sodium nitrite. It's enough to keep down the uh, bacteria and things like that that might find its way into the salmon during the smoking process. So now I'm just going to stir that up. What we're going to do next is I'm going to take this over to the stove. I'm going to bring it to a boil and I'm going to continue stirring it until the ingredients have kind of uh, all worked their way together. And then I'm going to let this cool while I prepare the pieces of, sm of salmon to be smoked. So here's our brine is all finished now. It's important for the brine to be as cold as you can possibly get it. So I've packed it in this big bowl, packed it with ice all around it. I want to bring the temperature down to below 40 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is just cover it and let it just sort of sit until the temperature comes down. Here's our salmon. I've had the salmon uh, chilling for quite a while now so that it is below 40 degrees. That's important because you don't want bacteria to be growing with the salmon. So you want to keep all of the temperatures for the fish below 40 degrees for the entire process if you can. So I've got three pieces here. Uh, I've washed these, cleaned them up. Um, we're going to remove these bones in them. Now these are little bones that attach to the ribs. And you can see here they just pull right out. I'm going to use needle nose pliers to just pull this bone out. Nobody likes to get a bone when they're going to eat fish. So it's a good idea to remove as many of the bones as you possibly can. Okay, because I think it's important to make sure that the salmon pieces you're going to smoke are relatively uniform in size, I like to take the salmon and to trim it so that it's a fairly uniform thickness. You can see here this is thick at one end and thin at the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it just so that it is a piece that's more or less uniform in size. And you can see here I have something now I can work with that's going to be uh, that uniform size. This kind of a piece I'll save and I'll have that for dinner or something else. We won't smoke that. Here's our brine, nice and chilled. It's about 37 degrees. And now I'm going to put our smoked sa our salmon in this to kind of cure. I took one filet that I left pretty whole. I make one like this that's smoked uh, for things like potlucks and things like that. The other pieces something like this size is just a little snack size that we might use around the house. So I'm going to put a glass dish on this now to keep all of these pieces under the brine. This just kind of weighs them down. There we go. And now we'll put it in the refrigerator. We refrigerate this for 12 to 24 hours in the brine. Okay, our salmon has been brining for 24 hours. It's time to take it out. We're going to dry it on some paper towels and then we're going to place it on a rack to uh, let a pellicle form on the outside of the salmon. So we dry it first and then we'll just place it right here like that. And I'm going to do that to all of our salmon. Okay, I have uh, finished drying off the salmon and now it's time to take it to the refrigerator where a uh, pellicle will form on the outside. We'll leave the salmon in the refrigerator until a pellicle has formed over it. A pellicle is a little layer of protein. Okay, our salmon has been in the refrigerator with the refrigerator's fan running for about uh, an hour and a half or two hours. 
and a little pellicle is formed on this. And you can see a pellicle is just a little bit of a dry uh, area where the proteins have been kind of sucked up to the top by evaporation and they form a nice little layer that keeps the uh, moisture inside the salmon while we smoke it. And now we're going to put it on the grill. Okay, we're outside now. This is my Smoke Shack smoker oven. I've lined it with aluminum foil and now we're ready to set it and get it to smoking. The great thing about using a Cook Shack smoker oven is that it is electric. Once you've set the wood in it to do, to do the smoking, all you have to do is just turn it on and you see it all lights up. It comes on at 225, but I found that it's easier to get a good smoky taste if you increase that initially to 250, and it'll bring up the temperature to 250, and through this little hole here, there'll be smoke coming out. When the smoke starts to come out, then we know it's pre-smoked and preheated and ready for our salmon. Okay, our smoker oven is up to temperature, and now I'm going to put our salmon on this griddle. It's a good idea to oil the salmon. I put peanut oil in this salmon. Hopefully the salmon won't stick. Okay, it's time to check on our smoked salmon. I've been cooking in here for about two, two and a half hours. And that's what I call smoked salmon. Okay, we've brought our salmon inside. And now we're going to let it kind of rest here until it has cooled off enough that we can package it. Okay, this is the secret to keeping your smoked salmon looking really good and keeping it fresh. This is a vacuum, Kenmore vacuum seal meal. It uses these bags to seal up the smoked salmon. I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to put a piece of our smoked salmon into the bag. I'm going to put the open end of the bag in this well where the vacuum uh, pump is located. Close the lid. Lock it shut. There's our smoked salmon, all nicely packed, ready to be put in the freezer.